Happy Stream Yard. We're live. What's up, historians? To another great episode of the Historically Haunted Vodcast. Look at this. Heather making it for me, my girl. Made that by hand. Historically Haunted, established in 2021. It's made out of wood and love. Uh, appreciate that. Real quick, um, our sponsor, she was actually our first ever sponsor here on the show. Um, she is Readings by Anna G, Anna Italiano. And she's not only uh, um, like a holistic healer type, you know, and she does like different designs and all that good stuff, but she's also um, very intuitive and communicative uh, with the spirit world, hence Readings by Anna. She's uh, been doing this for a long time. You guys could reach her at A G A R D N E R A. That's Anna Gardner, 1977 at yahoo.com for info. You can find her on Facebook, Readings by Anna G. She's got that page right there as well. She accepts cash, Venmo, PayPal. She does private readings. You can find her doing tours and stuff like that. She's all over the place, which is great. She's very active. Um, what is going on, Christina Farner? And Dungeon Dan Ubel. Oh, he's here to cause trouble. I know that. He knows our guest very well. A little bit about our guest before I bring her on. Um, Jennifer Folk. Recently married. Congratulations. We talked backstage a little bit. Formerly uh, Jennifer Amato. Uh, she is also um, Jennifer Amato author is what her Facebook page is. We're going to change that soon, I'm sure. Um, maybe not, though. I mean, certain people keep their names when they're artists or something. They don't really change it um, to keep the, the pen name going. But she's an author of many, many books. Uh, she's also a holistic healer, too. She does her own, makes her own goodies. We're going to talk right about that. We've had her on before. And Alexis Aaron, Candles by Alexis, was my co-host. We kind of talked and stuff. But now it's one-on-one. -on -one, so without further ado, you guys aren't wanting to listen to me. Oh, real quick shout out. We're officially sponsored by Boer and Green Logistics starting next week. Um, Denny Green, uh, Donnie Green, Donnie Green, the truck driver for Pet Cemetery. Um, he gave me a hefty check, some hats and stickers, and he's sponsoring me until June 1st. And he wants me also to be his booking agent because the truck from Pet Cemetery has been refurbished. The big red truck that killed Gage <laughs> when, he, when he was flying the kite and <laughs> get the baby. It's been refurbished, and that's going to go on tour at conventions and meet and greets and stuff. Donnie's going to be. Uh, part of that, and he wants me to be his agent. So if you guys want to book Donnie Green for something, let me know. Uh, make sure you go and message the page. But enough about that. Enough about that. It's about Jennifer Folk, um, Jennifer Amato. What is going on, author? Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Congratulations <laughs> on the the ring, the new man, Thank the you. new life. Thank you. I'm very excited. I saw yeah. the picture. I was like, oh, this, I, said, I put two and two together. I'm like, all right, I didn't see this guy before. I saw the name. You go like you look like you're having fun. You're smiling yeah. ear to ear, both of you. So that's killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, it, it's been a long time coming. We've been together eight years and we were like, oh hey, let's go get this done. And uh then we found out we could do it on Zoom. So we did <laughs> later no that day. No shit. <laughs> we oh, literally I was watching. Be careful. <laughs> we went yeah. we went and got our marriage license certificate, which actually in Arizona it's good for a year, which is really cool. And so we went and got that. And then um, I gave them a call because I knew I, we didn't want to go back downtown because downtown sucks. Any city downtown <laughs> sucks. Yeah. Amen. So, so um, they messaged, I emailed them. They messaged me back. They're like, you got 515 or 545 tonight. I was like, 545 it is. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> we got married in our, in our piranha pool work shirts and in the oh, living room. <laughs> I love it. That's right. You guys run the pool service together. Yes. Run a pool service. Yeah. I That's right. Service. I didn't even get to plug that. The pool service and, of course, uh, Mooligan Solistics and all that stuff, which we'll talk about. Um, yeah. And also uh, your T-shirt company. I mean, you do so I much. I do a lot. You, yeah, you do it. But that, you know what? I think that's better than sitting on my ass watching shows or being yes. into drama or what's the neighbors doing. I like to stay yeah. busy. Be. No, nope, you I make money. It's healthy. Yep. Um, my girl Heather says, "Congrats, Jen." Thank you, on, Heather. On everything, and Christina Farner from um, Crystal Clear Tarot. Uh, I said it right. She's uh, hey. says, "Hey," and there's your boy. Dungeon Hi, Adam, he says, he goes, Hello, Jen. <laughs> yeah, got the crew. Um, wait for people to turn on. I want to. I want to start talking about the books and stuff in a little bit. We get some more people tuning in here now, which is good. But before we jump into that, um, which we've touched before, but for those of you that maybe haven't watched, uh, we get some new people. What got you started uh, into this stuff, Jen? What gets you diving into like holistics and like the, the witchcraft type stuff, so to speak, the healing stuff, and just being yeah. an author? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. 
everything started, well, a lot of things started, like I started my t-shirt business because I couldn't get anybody to give me a phone call back for our business shirts. So I was like, well, screw it. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> um, Mystic T Designs, guys. M-Y-S-T-I-C, Mystic T-E-E Designs. Mystic yep. T Designs. Just and, for um, anything you need. Yeah. And then uh, as far as the holistic stuff, um, you know, it just, it took me a lot longer to actually really kind of dive into that. But once I did start um, diving into it and learning about how nature has a cure for pretty much everything. And I don't want to, I shouldn't say cure. It's got a remedy for pretty much everything. You know, um, it's, it, there's so much out there that can help you in your daily life. You have high blood pressure, you start taking Hawthorne Berry, it'll, lo it'll level it out. Uh, you got sugar issues, take some cinnamon, that'll level it out. Um, low or high, it doesn't wow, matter. Wow, you go the whole witch doctor approach. You're using yes. really all like Take care of myself, you know. Um, I, I have um, hereditary high cholesterol, you know, take some garlic for that. Garlic also does a, a ton of other things. It acts like a uh, antibiotic if you take enough of it every day. Um, so you won't get sick. It also helps uh, reduce inflammation. You know, so a lot of these herbs do multiple different things. And that's kind of what got me started because, you know, I'm like, I don't want to be attached to medicines with fillers and have to go to the doctor every couple months and get a new prescription because they're money hungry. I'm tired of big pharma. I'm tired of them being in my business. Paying out the ass for shit you don't even need. Yes. Yes. And, and, and having these drug companies come to these doctors and say, Hey, peddle my product and I'll give you a spiff. You know, I, I don't need, oh, that. Yeah. I do not need that. And nobody else does. <laughs> they walk around with Viagra shirts and yes. dishes and plates. Yeah, and exactly. And it's like, I, I'm not a guy, but hey, check this out. Viagra, you know? It, no, so thank dumb. you. It's, I, I just, I don't like it. It's all money-based. And the best way to take that away from them is to go back to nature where everything is free. That's why I smoke weed. And even that, they're trying to tax yeah. you now and me. And weed's legal, but we get a tax. I'm like, I can yeah. just grow it in my backyard like I can my tomatoes, my, my garlic. Yeah. Yep. I mean, like they, it's funny they say garlic keeps away vampires, but it's true because in a way it helps your blood, which they wouldn't like. They want high blood pressure. They want to be able to suck it down. I do not get but, bit often by mosquitoes, speaking of vampires. No, I'm just saying. That's, that's a remedy, too. <laughs> well, that's true. What you're doing. Well, it's it, you. It's true. It's, it is funny and you laugh, but the, what you're doing is but it's serious. old school medicine. This yes. is what we did before Big Pharma came in and said, oh, we can mass produce and this is fake the shit and make. Yes, this is Eric definitely Bridges. the oldest form of doctoring that Absolutely. even way before people even realized what medicine was. You know, you go out to the old hag in the country. She's like, here, take these herbs. This is, you know, eat this dandelion. You could eat any part of a dandelion plant. It's going to help you with multitudes of things, especially your gut. My mom made dandelion salads. The old Italian woman. My dandelion yeah. is amazing. So it bitter. Is, so oh, bitter, but it's good but with it's vinegar. So good for you. It is so good for you. She eats mushrooms. Go to the trees, pick mushrooms off the trees yes. in the woods, make mushroom salad. Yeah, definitely don't radishes. do that unless you are, you know, <laughs> what Well, she did for a whole day. year. She had a book on yeah. it. She'd go back and wash them yes. and grade them. And she'd mark Absolutely. them. Okay, chicken of the woods or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, we, we have. Called chicken of the woods or something. Yeah. And, and Heather is right. We literally have everything that we need in nature. Modern is 200 years old. Mm -hmm. Now ask how long we have been on this planet. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. see, uh, Heather couldn't wait to talk to you. Uh, Heather, I'll you <laughs> you I love Heather. I I'll send love you the Heather. link there if you want to jump on. I, I'll send her the link. I usually do what I didn't. But she loves because she's like you. She's grounded. Mm -hmm. She understands what we need in life. She's here for the people. Oh, um, I know. I, I, she was just like, I think she'd like to be an author. That's one thing you got because that takes balls. You oh, it's, great. Girl, it's so easy. Please do it. Just do oh, it. honestly, it is so easy. Dude, Please I'm do halfway it. done my book and I've been spray, I've been throwing away more paper than I've been writing, though. But I'm it's my so first excited one. for you. First of all, don't let do it that, again. get it down on paper. Just get it down on paper. And then you can put throw in the finer details. But you're doing you're doing different though. You're not doing a fiction novel, right? You're doing like nonfiction. I'm doing a bio of me. Yeah. Of what, okay. Yeah. That's what, a this. lot harder. That's well, like, not really because it's not like I got to think about it. It's my life, but I'm trying to think how to word things, and I don't want to insult certain family members because a lot of them fuck me over. Okay. So well, like, that right. right there is enough. I'm sorry, but I I really honestly could probably say six things about myself in six sentences. 
you get, you're trying to write a whole book about yourself. I think autobiographies, biographies, nonfiction, I think they're a little bit more difficult to write than fiction because I'm living in a world in my head that's completely made up and I make the rules. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, so you're while you're touching that, we get about we, we get about 10 people watching. Real quick, let me just show this real quick. Can you see that? Yeah, that's that's me. her, guys. <laughs> I wanted to get it on there. Um I'm still learning the streamer thing. I kind of do it alone. I think if Heather or someone had a moderator thing, I could uh, do better. But let me go. Can you see the whole? This is her page, guys. Get That's on me. there. The yep. group. The group. Jana. Yeah. Um, a lot Jana. of people. Uh, uh, Jana. And, and, I always pronounce yeah. it wrong. That's okay. Last time. She actually. No, it's not okay. Three. <laughs> Three of um, all my, all four of my characters are Look actually based on real life people. Yeah, that's in my buddy Jack Childress's house. He put, he was like, "Look what I got." Oh, he, he <laughs> and I'm up on his, I'm up on his wall. I'm like, "Oh, uh -huh. I made it." <laughs> George Costa too likes likes get your stuff, order yes, your stuff, I, and I I love him to death because he's like, "When's the paper back coming out?" I'm like, "I don't know," because Stacy's yeah, out. He's real though. I'm, he loves you. I he know, tells you he's coming out. I'm surprised he's not in chat yet. He's gonna be pissed. Oh my God. I'm, I'm really, I love that. You know, I actually, I've had a couple of people who are personal close friends of mine or family who I really was not expecting to read the book. They read it and they're like, I'm not a fan of reading, but I really like your book. I think it's, they're like surprised that I, I was able to put that many sentences together. <laughs> it's I, I, I see what you're saying. I yeah. mean, you know, it's, I mean, my aunt, she knows me. She knows how I am. She knows how I talk. I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty, hey, you know, you do this, do this, do this. It's very simple. You know, you know, why, what are you doing? Why is it taking you so long? You know, she doesn't expect me to be able to put a cohesive idea out there, let alone write four books on single cohesive idea. So she was, but she oh, was awesome. really proud of me. She messaged me. She was like, Oh my God, this is so good. And it was so nice to hear. Those are my favorite when people are like, I'm really not a big reader, but you, you really did a good job. Thank you so much. And I'm just oh, like, wow, thank God. you. I, that was, that's the best compliment. I, and, and if anything, you might get them hooked on, you know, because they're going to want to read more of your shit. So yeah. if anything, they're going to be, they might want to read other people's shit. So you may have turned someone on to reading in general, which I think so. Right. I, I've become a reader. I've always loved Stephen King. As you can tell, I definitely got a heart yes. for King. You do but a little bit. <laughs> I know. I'm a little too much. I get it. My, a little my bit. No, hellish, I love it. At least you have a passion. <laughs> well, I figure it could be worse. The dude's been good to his wife, good to his kids. Try to find a bad thing on him. I know his political views or whatever, but other than that, the dude's awesome to his wife, his kids. He donates money to That's books great. and libraries. You can't fucking, you really, he created Pennywise. I mean, you really can't hate the fuck. Plus, I went to the same high school as him, and I live a half hour away from his house in Bangor. So well, yeah, you kind of what have the a fuck? Bit it went in Rome, connection. right? <laughs> right. Was, if I was in Rhode Island, it'd be H.P. Lovecraft, which I've been it, to his grave. I've been to H.P. Lovecraft's grave in House that of That would Providence. be so interesting. So I, I have a new respect. I've always liked reading books, and and it, honestly, when you send me that care package, I'll PayPal you whatever it costs for a book. Your first one, I'd love to get started on. I'm that. sending you one for sure. Well, I'll give you PayPal, whatever it takes. Oh, hi, Jean. Jean is a curator at the International Cryptozoology Museum, and she's a big cat hunter. Oh, hi, she, Jean. <laughs> Jean Tewksbury, she hunts like wildcats in Maine, like fucking oh, that is and so lions. cool. Yeah, she's really? a real. You should awesome come chick. out to Arizona. We have tons. Yeah, what? <laughs> we have tons of mountain lions and stuff like really? that. Really? Oh yeah. Jean, did Co you know that? Coyotes, mountain lions. Uh, we have all sorts of different big cats out here. Wow, coyotes. They, they like desert wolves. They yeah. like the hang out in the backyard They'll, you'll just catch them yeah gene did you'll just catch them lounging midday they're just do they howl at night the moon and shit do they howl at the moon and shit coyotes do they don't howl at the moon they do howl though we live um really close enough to a den where we can hear them oh my fucking Especially, god you can always weird. tell when they have caught something in their sights and they're going after something because they get this yip 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 going it's really it's interesting you're gonna write about that one of your new novels, man. <laughs> I um, am. Um, I am entering. I am uh, actually introducing a dog into the third book. Ooh, spoiler alert! Yeah, little teeny tiny tidbit. Because there was a dog that was talked about 
or the possibility of a dog. Um, in the first book, the group, Jana. I want to. I want to do the first one first. I want the first one. I want them in order. Yes. There was a dog that was talked about possibly being there, and the first thing my mother in law said when she read the book, she was like, "What happened to the dog?" And oh. I'm like. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I didn't even put the dog in until the third book. So you have it. no idea. That there is no, there is no, well, I mean, there's evidence of a dog with the dog bull. Oh. At a house that they went into in the first book. It's a she's stinking like, man's book. It's a she's stinking like, book. Yeah. She's like, I want to know what happened to the dog. I'm like, don't worry. I'm getting there. So I have now introduced a dog in the third book, which is not out yet. I'm still writing it. I'm about 12,000 words in. Uh, okay. Well, I got to ask you this. Jen, you actually just walked me into the next question because when you plan this series out in this book, is this already in your head? Or are you just letting the book speak for itself and you're feeding off the last book and just starting fresh? Half and half. You know, <laughs> My, That's fair. half okay, and half. Fair. I had yep. an idea and it turned into four books. And then these characters kind of bloomed on their own while they were based Three out of four of them were based off of real life people that I know. Whoa. Um, the This third one is not based off of anybody. So I'm really challenging myself with kind of creating this character. But um, while these people were based off of people that I personally know in my life, um, they're not, they, they have a mind of their own and have taken off with that, if that makes hmm. sense. Like, so it's almost it's almost fiction meets nonfiction ish. I mean, in a way, I mean, a tiny bit. I mean, if it's, no, they got space. similar. They got names. They're, the names are from people I know, <laughs> and oh, and a the lot of their are, okay. a lot so, of their mannerisms are from people yep. I know. Um, Traits Jana, and shit, yeah, yeah. Jana's issues are definitely from my real life friend who is actually across the pond in the UK. Oh, wild! Yeah. They say yeah. the things draw inspiration from, I mean, a life in imitates are uh, yeah. Haunted Souls uh, front man Doug Seaver saying hello, guys, and Kathy checking in. Hi. Hello. Hi. We're talking to uh, formerly Jenna Motto author, now Jennifer Folk, recently <laughs> yes. married. She's still, Jenna, she's still Jennifer uh, Amato or Jen Amato author. You yeah. You can find her, in, of course, on Facebook for now. I am, keep, I am keeping that. Since that was a, you know, that's, that's my series. I, I am keeping that. Um, yeah. If I do, I am planning on writing a science fiction novel after this. And it'll probably be under JL Folk. So you're open to all of it then. You're not just sticking yes. to one type of thing. No. I like that. So you may do a bio someday. That's cool. I'm going to, I I may. That's going to be my huge challenge. <laughs> that's that's when I feel like. I should have like... with a bio. I thought no. I was an idiot. No. <laughs> you definitely shouldn't have. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm like, man, I'll make it. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, because my grandmother, my grandmother wanted my, gave my mom money to abort me. My mom decided to keep me because she was told she was not supposed to have kids. Well, hopefully she, she kept the money. Yeah, I think she actually yeah, did. My Atta mom's girl. fucking old. Yeah. She bought, girl. Weed, <laughs> she bought weed with it, I'm sure. Had a girl. <laughs> um, so yeah, Whatever. so I get into it. And then, of course, a couple of times I fucking kind of cry because my fuck, sometimes in my life, I kind of everybody gets fucked. It's a good, it's course, a good it's shadow just, work. Type yeah, of it's different. And then I thought to myself, I'm never fucking running again. And then I go, well, this I'm starting hard. I'm putting the level. I, if I can go next time on places I've been, like haunted historic places. Yeah. But I would like to be like you guys and Stephen King. I would like to kind of make my own world up. I think about shit all the time. Yeah. You know, it, uh, it must be fun, right? I mean, it is you actually the character life. I mean, you do you do cry a lot. No lie. You do just because you want to beat your head. You just want to beat your head against the, the computer sometimes because you're like, we want the words come out. <laughs> no, no, no disrespect. That's true. I have a new respect for authors, man. Writer's block. And just, you know, if you get bad news, you don't want to sit down and write a book for an hour exactly. and a half. Exactly. I do not want to write. <laughs> like, and today, my day's shot. Because we've got, you know, my husband's kids coming out. We have, um, you know, my dog got fixed. So she's under, you know, well, she, she yep. she's a girl. That's right. No, she, yeah. She's oh, my look. baby. Jen. Oh, Dungeon Dan. <laughs> Was that something like there's no crying in baseball? <laughs> I knew he'd bring it. I know if anybody would bring it, it'd be them. But he's got mad respect. He's one of them too. They're all part. They, there's a bunch of you great. Uh, you recommended so many of these great dudes to me, and they've come around. Yes, uh, writers. I had uh, Barton on a couple weeks ago. We're talking to yeah. him. He's a, uh, he was a great dude talking about Stephen King stuff with him. He's a big fan. Oh, he's I got, um, awesome. I got, he's I got out a here. Girl coming he up that's in the group. Judge, uh, not Jessica, but 
shoot, I forget now. I got her coming on in like a month. She's part of your circle. Does that ring okay. a bell? Just There's a Georgie. Hey, George. <laughs> George, I got your gift in. I'm at Heather's. I'm going to unbox it. He sent me a gift that he got that's part of the Warren's legacy, the Warren Foundation. It's part of oh, the Warren's. Wow. And it's still in Heather's thing. I got to unwrap it. I told him I'd go live with it. I was going to. I was going to go get it and do it now live, but it's your time. I don't want to take this away from that, you. Oh, no, please. That's quite all right. If you want to do that, I'm interested, too. I love the Warrens. Um, well, I love Paranormal. I I live it, love it. I If I could you, eat it for breakfast, I would. <laughs> let me, <laughs> well, let, uh, you'd have to talk for like 10. I had to go downstairs again. You'd have to talk for like 10 minutes. Oh, honey, I'm a co-host on a podcast. I can do oh, this. Yeah, <laughs> Let, let me, let me, you're such a great, I love that. We, we talk a lot. Um, We've been fucking Facebook friends for, for about two years now, but we've talked a lot off this. Yes. And we have yes. a mutual respect. And I know you've been busy lately, but you're going to say, uh, Kristen Vincent. Yes. She's an author. Too. Yes. She's, she's, coming an, on about she's a amazing. Month. She's an amazing girl. I absolutely adore her. Um, she was doing yes, stuff. Heather, bring yeah. it up for him. So you, bring you, it you up. Agree then. Bring it up. Although, yeah, <laughs> all those people are great. Uh, yes. are great. The whole crew. Uh, yes. Heather, I just need um, the link if you're watching. I'll have you and Jen talk while I go grab. I can bring it up. She says, "Okay, yeah. she's gonna come up." That's why I said, "Bring it up, <laughs> dude." It's an um, expensive piece, so. The uh, there's another one that's a really uh, an author that we had on um because I'm on the Book Asylum podcast and yes. which is with Jack yeah which is with Jack Childress and um Dan Ubell and. You know, um, we got Richard Ryan Rose and, you know, we have different guests all the time. Angel Ramon is on there as go well. solo and wear like pajamas and have coffee and shit. Or is that we, the same one? Me? No, this is, this is a separate podcast that me and my publisher were, DJ Cooper, were talking about doing that we have not gotten around to doing yet. We're both... Her and I both are like super busy chicks. I don't not even know why we. Week, girl. Not I'm telling week. you, I do not have enough hours a day. If I had five more hours, I would still need five more hours a day. Eight <laughs> so, days a week. Eight, eight, days, eight a week. days a week. That extra but, um, day would be great, I think. Yeah. And uh, we had a guest on a while back, and I wasn't able to be on that podcast, but we she had her first debut book. Um, and her name is Angie Barton. She's another one you, you, she's into vampires and yep. this book kind oh. of the immortal, um, immortal wounds, I believe is what it's called. Her is book he has, Derek? I don't think she's related to Derek. I, I know. I, I thought that too at first, but she has, um, a, on a, a magnificent way of kind of melding together, um, witchcraft and, um vampires and it is just angie was just she really was an amazing guest that week um she said she was awesome yeah i like that well that's what i think is like with you like i i like figuring out where you come up with these people like the dog and stuff like you had it in your mind since the first book what this dog was going to be like right yes i yeah of course it's a german shepherd because that's what i have so oh. there's another spoiler alert so there is Beautiful, a german shepherd coming Yes, it's like exactly. Them. They're beautiful, but they're intimidating. But if you ever have had German Shepherds, they're the biggest babies on the planet. They're like pitties. really. They look scary, but they're really not. They're really, not. well, at least have them though. But they train them to be rough. Yeah, and you do. You do have to. German Shepherds are very is very necessary to train them. They have. They're smarter than all of us. If they had opposable thumbs, they'd take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> they say these dogs, I mean, they 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 know how to fetch shit. They learn they they know better English than we know. Uh, um, uh, Dungeon Dan was my... gonna ask you about the hillbillies. Oh. Can we talk about that? Well, I don't care. There's no rules here. Oh. The oh, hillbillies. gross. Don't get me started. What is it? Inbred? Okay, so the hillbillies are not my friends. <laughs> what does that mean? Is that like real life ones or in your book? Yes. <laughs> yes to both. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> all, of, all of my bad guys, believe me when I say, all of my bad guys have pissed me off in real life at some point. You wrote your villains in, honestly, not to bring it up, I got to do it, but Stephen King, uh, Randall Flagg, that's a real guy, FL Flagg, and all his villains are real life people. That is my way of getting my retribution. 
And you don't have to give them any rights either. You don't have to give them any money. Look, you put funny I don't pictures. have to give them jack shit. I don't have to give them shit. I love and that's it. the best part. There that is, is the no, and, and with me being in law enforcement previously, I'm like, I don't have, there's just no bill of rights in Jen Amato's world. <laughs> ah, I fucking love that. Yes. I love that. So, that's um, your little payback. Yes, exactly. So these hillbillies are not good people. They are pieces of shit in real life. And they are pieces, they are bigger pieces of shit in my book. That's so all I'm giving. Them, you know them from like childhood or early days or? Um, one. One from my early 20s. So this is, know. okay, so this is like, and I'm 45. I'm <laughs> harboring. <laughs> oh, hi, Sabelle. She's a buddy oh, of mine. Oh, that's a killer name. In, Sabelle is a cool name. She yeah. is in Pennsylvania. She owns a um, witchcraft store called Sabelle's. You can find her on Facebook. Oh, so but, um, I'll have you as a guest sometime. We'll talk about that. My yes, a you would killer. absolutely adore her on there. And you and Heather both. Heather would That's love her. her. Um, but she's in Pennsylvania. But the hillbillies, um, I have 20 years of 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 white hot rage at one one of them in particular. <laughs> 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 He's that getting awesome. the worst. He's getting the worst end of the deal. <laughs> you've, always, you've always lived southern, more or less, right? You've lived in the, well, you're from the south, like Arizona or no Toledo, no? Ohio. Where my oh. book takes place. That is where I you am You said from. that last show. That's from yeah, Ohio. That's okay. I don't expect you to remember everything. Yes. I'm born and raised. Right now. <laughs> born and raised Toledo, Ohio. I love you too, Sabelle. <laughs> Good evening, Megan. Hi, Sabelle. Hi, Thank Megan. you for joining us, ladies. <laughs> Um, um, so yeah, born Ohio. and raised Toledo, Ohio. So I That's am right. a Midwest girl, you know, got that Midwest work, work ethic and, um, That's a good thing. Not afraid to whoop ass though, if I need to. Amen. And yeah. I just, I just moved out to, um, Arizona in 2020. So yeah, just, wow. better, isn't it? I love you the like weather the out here. You dig the love heat? it. Yeah, I, mean. I love it. This is my favorite. Wow. I'll tell you right now, um, the feel that you have um going back to my paganism the um desert magic is completely different than the forest magic and that's what i would call it in east coast because there's a lot of trees a lot of life a lot of um green but out here there's still a ton of life it's just a different kind of life and it's it's really awesome to me the uh like cactuses, there are plants still, and they hold water inside of them and stuff like that. But they can go fucking like months without rain. But yeah, people, we yeah. don't know that. We go out so just like you guys really wouldn't get the pine tree thing. That's more or less for us. We so we have culture, some right? pine trees, not oh, many, really? but we have some. Now, um, we did just recently in my little poke dunk town here. We just recently <laughs> had a bear that was going out eating prickly pear cactus. So wherever he's from, wherever that bear was from, he Whoa. came into town to eat our cactus. Yeah. Can you? Can we eat cactuses as humans? Is there a certain oh, way yeah. to cook? Yeah. I'd love to eat one. Just I'd love skin to them. It. Just skin them. Oh, em. shit. Uh, you can, I um, think you can never, eat them. Arizona's <laughs> never been the same since so you get there. Um, we got true. a stalker in the house, Jen. He wants to know when the book is available in paperback. He's I'm dying. still, we're still waiting to hear back. Um, the publisher is not 100% sure. She keeps telling me any day. <laughs> but That's as very soon vague. As I, I, yeah, I've been looking. I, I don't know what's taking so long, to be honest. But um, I know it took a while the last time when my um, first book came out. I know it took a while for the paperback to be available, too. Supply and demand. Make them want it, Jen. Make them really fucking want it. <laughs> He's uh, been with, wanting it. <laughs> yes. Uh, hell yeah. With my husband's. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, her husband's my second husband. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, pine trees are in Flagstaff. Arizona. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're they're up closer to Flagstaff. So I know, George. I know. I I wish I had a better date for you. But like I said, I have been looking. I have been looking because I know He's, that you're waiting. Uh, what's the word? Persistent? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of he that, so George, 
he messaged me last week. He's like, I'd like to sponsor the show, but I got something better for you. And he got this for me. And I'll explain to it. And I got it in and I told Heather what it was. And she goes, I'm not opening it till you get here. Because I live three hours north of Heather. I live, I live yes. by Bangor. So, oh boy. Let's see, see it. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, he got you a box of foamy peanuts. Just don't eat them. <laughs> so this is one of 666, 666 bottles of specially made vodka that was set no. in front of the real Annabelle at the Warren's Occult Museum in Connecticut for a month. It sat there. So it's in a Ouija board box. The bottle is oh unopened with God. vodka, and it comes with gloves, holy water, and a planchette. Because you can't touch it without a priest's blessing. Otherwise, you'll get possessed. Yeah, I bet you can't touch anything that's His been in front of that cap. damn thing. Jesus, George, what the fuck did you wrap this with, man? Look at the bubble tape on this. <laughs> Gorilla glue. He, he's got <laughs> one bottle that he got himself that was left open in front of Annabelle, which... Yeah, Heather's not too too excited about this being here, but... Uh -oh, uh, it's taking longer than expected. She I knows what to do. No, you're fine. She knows what to do. <laughs> So here is the box. Oh my God, that's so cool. It's that amazing, is a cool it, box. The box alone is, oh boy. Woo! It is Herodin Vodka, handcrafted. Uh, it even has got a Ouija board thing on it. This is literally a certificate authenticity. This is literally. Oh my God, that's gorgeous. Oof. And here's the gloves. That were on top of it. <laughs> we're talking oh. like, oh yeah, woo, powerful stuff. Uh, George DeCoster, I'll make a video of this later, a YouTube video. That's uh, that is really freaking sweet. I tell you, man, there's certain people in this field, like Betsy Brown Williams, George, Alexis, Aaron. They will support you. They will buy your stuff. They will share your stuff, and it's good to have good folk. That's um, so amazing. George thinks, thank you, George. And thank you, Jen, for letting me do that on air. That was cool. Oh, yeah, no. I'm I'm honored that I got to see it. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's cool. It's pretty wild, man. Heather's not, like I said, Heather's a little leery about it. But. Uh, yeah, she knows what she's doing. She can clear dude, it up. Dude, we've met Annabelle twice. What's the problem? <laughs> that's right. She knows right. what she's doing. She's what she's doing. And worst comes to worst, uh, Jennifer Folk can make us some some sage. I can. Or some Pali Santo. <laughs> or she's got all that stuff. You're very welcome. Thank you, brother. That is cool. Yes, that is friggin' sweet. That is. Yes. Thank you. Um, that's awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. So, um, Jen, let's talk about some fun stuff before we get back to some, the work. Um, as Like I said, we, we've talked about this before, but I, I new people listening now. What's some of the stuff you groove out to since you're dancing right now? What do you like to jam to when you're um, in the mood to write or you maybe celebrate when you get done writing something? So um, I I hold my own personal concerts in the car. <laughs> um, and when I'm doing that, it's a very wide range. Anything between 70s rock to I stop at the 90s because maybe early 2000s because anything after that is shit um <laughs> for the most part you're not lying i'm not you know i, I know good music <laughs> so no. i love you know i love the old <clears throat> the old guys you know um the stuff that we all grew up with acdc metallica def leppard um I, poison Alice in Chains, you know, oh. Alice Cooper. I, I really, um, a lot of those I really like, but I also like, and this is going to sound so crazy. I like Backstreet Boys. I like NSYNC. <laughs> like, Everybody's got a guilty pleasure, dude. I get I it. will tell you, my girl crushes are Adele and Pink. Fantastic voice. And what? Adele and, Pink, Adele and Pink. Heather likes pink. Heather doesn't do a lot of pink. I, when my I girl crushes right there. I would so smash. That, um, oh, <laughs> yes. That was dope. That was one of the best cuts I've ever had from a guest. Yeah. <laughs> I would, smash. I would well, so smash. I could um, see you in pink rolling around. That'd be a show. Yes. We both <laughs> smoke Newport. So <laughs> let's get it on. <laughs> well, you fucking get fucking Heather all excited. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, look at that. You got him all pumped up. Oh. <laughs> That's what we like, do here. We break barriers. We get people to speak the truth. And Jenny, Jenny's been drinking. I'm the one that's been drinking. 
<laughs> I'm telling Jack and Jeffy. Snitches get stitches. <laughs> that's it. Narc, narc, narc. Boo this man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is fun shit. That's cool. Well, nothing wrong with that. Honestly, I get guilty pleasures. I play some shit sometime. If you're in your car, dude, and your windows are up, dude, who gives a shit? I'll play I Mickey Mouse to sing along. Dancing who cares? and having my own. I am singing Evanescence like I'm on freaking stage. And <laughs> nobody can tell me any different. I am a superstar at that moment. Here's to you. <laughs> Is there, why not? If it makes you because, feel good, you don't hurt well, anybody. You know no. what? I'm 45. I don't give a shit. I'm going to be 44 in, a, in uh, September. Uh, and that's what I'm thinking. I go, I, I'm done explaining. If I watch yep. fucking How the Grinch Stole Christmas in mid-June, I can do what the fuck I want. As long as I'm not hurting anybody, what's it to you? And exactly. if you care that I put too much ranch on, or, or I put pineapples on my pizza, you're the one with the fucking problem, not me. Ooh, what do you ooh, care what I mean? you're, you're crossing the line there, buddy. Oh, you'll be one of them. <laughs> I don't, listen, okay, listen. If someone offers me something, I want to make sure that it's not snail shit or... Or fucking pearl juice, or, or or mushrooms, or whatever. I want to make sure I know what it is. But if yeah. you're eating, it, if you want to eat the cow shit dipped in fucking horseradish, more power to you. Put a pineapple I mean, I've, on that. I've I seen inmates eat poop. That's kind of gross, but yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Jesus, they call that fucking uh, chocolate cake in uh, certain well, they're, France. Huh? They're definitely in medical. <laughs> right, you worked. Uh, you work with prisoners, didn't you? I was a corrections officer for That's six and right. a half years, you seven years. Some shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, literally. <laughs> Floating across the floor while I'm trying to eat lunch. <laughs> yes, um, I've seen shit. <laughs> Did you ever incorporate that into any of your books? Have you ever written about like jail? T- Not yet. Not yet. 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 I have a lot of really screwed up ideas rolling around in this little cranium I've got up here. So there's more books. Good for you. It's, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with keeping the chambers filled with extra bullets. Shit. Can I say that? You right. Know I mean? Exactly. No, you know I mean? know exactly what you mean. And that's, I mean, for me, I'm, I, I, I've wanted to write since I was 14. I've wanted Aww. to do this. You know, I, and instead of Stephen King, I had the other one, Dean Coons, the other God. <laughs> He's got some good shit too. Uh, man. I, tell I you, some good read- offers around us. I read his stuff. Coons is good. When I was 14, I could not put his books down. I was at the library every couple of days because I was reading through his stuff. And um, I actually won a gift certificate because I was so into his work that I just, I kept reading and reading and reading. And I signed up for the uh, teenage reading program at the library. And I I won a $25 gift certificate to the mall. It was pretty cool. That's fucking um, dope. Yeah. 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 But I knew I wanted to write when I started reading Dean Coons. And I'm like, oh, they really write about this stuff. Because his is kind of psychological thriller. Some of it's paranormal. I love his Odd Thomas series. His Odd Thomas yeah. series is amazing. Um, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. I haven't yes, read it yet. I've heard he that. has one that is such a mind fuck. And I can't, I think it was chills or something like that it was just what it was that's a cool name for a book. night chills oh. night chills Night chills. it was such a good mood or good um book that i was just like oh my god it was such a mind fuck it blew me away and it's coons with a k or c k that's a k isn't it i've Dean seen Coons, that k. yeah yeah i go to book you say i have little library things and i try to look for king books and i've seen that a lot and i've seen what's the other guy that writes about guns a lot here um clancy tom clancy oh yeah so tom clancy yeah it's not really king, of, thing. Okay, king of the respect. military military dramas is, is it seems like is what his thing is he does a lot of the military writing and i well yeah. i appreciate that that's yeah. not my thing either it, it's a really for that and i respect yes. them but i don't yes. see myself reading but it's so many other books i want to read ahead of time i don't see any time my tbr list could probably fill up this freaking bedroom it's bad. <laughs> uh, do you, do you, um, if you, do you, did you read like mad magazines or, or cracked? No. Did you read no, no magazines? Let me tell you a little bit about teenage Jen. I was wannabe hood, but pretty pretentious. And I thought I'm above those mad magazines. So, <laughs> yeah. And now That's I'm cool. like, now I'm sitting here talking about, you know, <laughs> 
banging out female rock stars. In the, who cares? I, sma I smashed fucking Pink. I I'm like, smashed. <laughs> yes. That's so fucking funny. Just... I then I had a crush on Pink too. Oh, yeah. I like her for her music bullshit. Well, maybe you Yeah, do okay. Too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I like her Go to hair. Travis Barker. Go to the drummer or whatever the fuck his name is. Well, I, he's getting know, a lot, huh? And, and the thing ass. is, my my husband knows way more about music than I do. You know, I know a couple of, you know, a couple of people, a couple of the big names, and I know what songs I like. I know what I don't like. Some people just have really shitty deliveries. Some people just have really shitty music. Um, So I guess, like, for me, I, I, you know, music was never really a huge deal for me. My creative outlet was writing and reading and always has been. And um, so for me, like I can sit down and I can write a book, but my husband, he, he's got great ideas, but he can't sit down and write a book. Um, but he can tell you why exactly he likes specific songs from the Deftones and what they're saying. And I'm like, I can't even hear the lyrics. I'm like, I don't even understand what they're talking about. And you're sitting here going, oh, yeah, it's a love song. Yeah, that one's a love song, too. And I'm just like, how do you know? Oh, <laughs> uh, tones. I yeah, he's a big Deftones fan. Blow he's a, me away. Yeah, he's a big I the change in you. I saw them. They opened up in Augusta in 1997. In Augusta, Maine, they opened up, and all they had was a little thing in cursive that said Deftones. It was after their Adrenaline album came out, right yeah. before Around the Fur came out. And they had a skateboard hanging down. They opened up for White Zombie and Pantera. What a show. And he, Deftones he came said out. they're what? really good, yeah. They won my heart. They're, they're you. It's The guy's voice, not whiny, but it's a different type of singing, almost uh -huh. like... So you, yeah, you know, you got to dig it if you dig it, and the lyrics are pretty cool. But that's that's cool. But I get yeah. what he's doing because, in a way, songwriting is like writing a book, but it's it's like small. It's exactly, way, right? He's like, his creative mind thinks differently. He's very creative. He um he can see like he sees things. Some things that he sees, he's like, oh no, you know, I'm sitting there like I uh -uh, I just don't like how it looks, and and he's like. Oh no, there's a there's a creative beauty here. I see what the uh, what the artist is trying to do, you know, and he'll break it down for me and I'll be like, "Huh. Never looked at it that way." And you're right. Perspective. Oh, Different his perspective. Yeah. He's got I I don't know, maybe it's his his jibbo part of him or what, but he's got some <laughs> weird mystical perspective about him that he's just like I I'm in awe of him sometimes where I'm just but like But then you well, that's what completes you both because you yeah. bring this part, he brings that part because that's like with me and Heather. And I think that's what really the key is to a good relationship is. Yes. I think if you're too much the same, it's almost butting it's heads. A, but it's a train wreck. Table, yeah. It's like, we're a fucking unit, bro. Because yeah. what I lack in, you exceed it and vice versa. Yep. That's, and that's exactly how it works for us. <laughs> so. That's killer. I mean, look at you guys. Yeah. You guys run a pool company, a t-shirt company, a yeah. fucking, you, you write your own books, you do holistics. Who knows what the yeah. fuck else he does? Not to mention you guys are living in the desert out there getting married. Like, life don't stop for you, girl. No, <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, if there's what do you one do in thing... your downtime? Do you watch movies and shit? Do you sleep? <laughs> okay, so not to sound typical female, but we watched a show called That Chapter on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> I don't know if I've heard of that. I don't think I've heard of that chapter on YouTube. Or yeah, it's, on it's YouTube. called it's on YouTube. That it's chapter. called that chapter, and it's true crime videos. Oh, I like true crime. And oh, we will sit there. Yeah, we will sit there and watch it. Well, now since Stargate is done. We're done watching Stargate. We loved Stargate. That was a good we'll sit, series I heard. Yeah. We will, oh my God. All three of them. We will sit there and we will watch shows and um, we'll watch them until they're done. And then we're like, oh shit, what are we going to watch now? And then we'll find I another. I fucking hate you know? that. I yeah, fucking hate that. Yeah. We're try, we, try to find, <laughs> we try to find shows together to watch. We watch, like I said, we watch that chapter. Mikey, the guy who... Uh, who talks on that chapter, whose who's, uh, podcast it is or vodcast or whatever the heck it is. He, um, I think he's Irish. I think he's from Ireland. I think he's, um, I think he's like American, but he, um, he definitely has a very, an Irish accent from over there. Um, Cause he says tree for three. Oh, I don't rightly know, but I see about tree of um, Rago. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Good, yeah. Yeah. So he's got a little bit. 
But um, I like that. I like accents and shit. Dungeon That's Dan, cool. do not call me out like that. <laughs> oh, what, I was just going to ask you what, do you, what do you dig for movies? Is it What do you dig? Is that Zombie Okay, Land so or? the whole five minute Jen comment that he made at the beginning of the show is yeah. because I have yet to make it. Okay, first of all, they recommend some of the dumbest movies for me to watch. They recommend, <laughs> okay, shit Burn. like Chud. Have you seen Chud? Did Chud you watch it in the 80s? Don't tell me it was good. It was boring as shit. And I, I, I've fire, had to but... watch it. I've gotten maybe halfway through in five minute increments because I can't, I fall asleep every time. <laughs> it's wicked 80s. You got to watch it in the 80s. You can't watch it now. It's almost too slow. I get you. You it's definitely almost... can't because I'm like, and then he's like, oh no, rubber was, a, or Jack. Jack was like, rubber's a good one. And I'm like, it's a tire. How is that demonic? I'm so oh, the confused. rubber thing. I saw yeah. that with a tire sitting there. I go, what the fuck is that? Is yeah, no, tire? no, thank you. So it's a demonic I, I, tire. What? Yeah, yeah. Come on, Jen. Nah. Shaun of the Dead, George. Great movie. Shaun of the Dead. I have seen the whole thing, and it is fucking hysterical. Oh my I god. Yeah. Him and, and his he, buddy at the lake trying to get past his. Oh, he's yeah, dying. right now he's dead there. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> When they just learn that they're walking in the street and they stop in the middle. <laughs> it's such a spoof. It's such a spoof. Uh, what kills people? The fucking tire kills the people? The tire Mike? kills people. It's a spare tire with no rim. It's, it's just rolling tire. down the road. It's a tire. How can it kill people? No, that but can't yes. be true. The it, whole movie's it, about that? That is, a mo that is the movie. I have even, well, I've who not would sign even off bothered. on that? Well, apparently, Dungeon Dan thinks it's freaking hysterical. Because there's people like him that buy that shit. Yeah. I don't have to give it a chance. Never. Just That'll like there are eight people in the country that keep Long John Silver's open, which I am one of those eight. <laughs> He's one of those eight people that are keeping rubber. I didn't rubber. know there was one. Yeah, yeah. So, um. yeah. And then they made me, they told me, oh, you got to watch Killer Clowns. That's hysterical. So I watched Killer Clowns in increments of five minutes. And I about shit myself from boredom. I do like Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The, the, oh, the, the, my the, God. The, the cotton candy cocoons. And when he does the puppets, come on. you got to give it. And you gotta then give. this past Halloween, I saw the shit at Spirit Halloween. Oh, they have the thing when you step on it and it comes at you. Clowns are terrifying. No, I've never liked circuses even before. Yeah, I've never liked killer, circuses. They had a whole section of Killer Clown shit. So that you could be a killer clown for Halloween. I, they had the stupid little popcorn ray guns. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. George, you just got knocked down a peg. <laughs> um, I got to show you something real quick because we went by this comment and I thought it was great. Um, you got some murdering to do. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> okay, Sabel. <laughs> Does he know? <laughs> well, I guess he's not supposed to know. That's a whole plot, right? If you know, oh, you're okay. kid, you're gonna try to avoid it. I mean, I can, I can find somewhere for him. No, no. Oh, they're all loving clowns. No. no. What zombie no. ass toilet? Yes, of this is a. They showed me the the Stop, guys. The, that's not real. Yes, it is. They showed me the trailer or the um poster, the ad for it. Yes, it's real. And it's a toilet. It, it's no, 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 no. It's killer farts and killer shit. I've seen Attack of the Killer Donuts, which is pretty dumb. So I guess there is no limit when it comes to horror. And they say it's art. And I've almost seen it all. And I like some of it. But that's fucking holy. I God. really don't understand how. Now, first of all, I just want to premise this with farts are funny. They're Shit's funny. Zombie. I don't give a goddamn who we are. They're funny. But they're um, not killer. <laughs> they're not killer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> some people, maybe. Depends but on just what like snakes on a plane and a shark tornado where tornadoes lift sharks up and it kills people. Come on. Yeah. And just, you know, how far fresh are we going to go? But it's for fun instead of dumb. I mean, or, or serious, I guess. But yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It ruins classics like fucking Amityville and fucking shit. <laughs> Cause then how yeah. can you take it? How can you put it in the same category? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they're having fun with it, but I really would like a really good fucking scary movie. To come out. Okay, I, I was going to ask you that since like the original Exorcist, maybe that set the bar. But I mean, a lot of this scream and I know you did last summer and all that's just kind of a psychological thriller to me, not so much that's, a horror. I don't know. That's, right? I don't, I don't know. think it's really that great. But I mean, I guess um, 
the I will say the Korean scary movie genre has really kicked ass lately. Um, I forgot the name of the movie, but it was on, I think, Netflix or Prime. It was called, it was like Incantation or something like that. Mm. Korean film. Very good. Um, and they got less restrictions over there. Yeah. And Uma. 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 It's UMA, it, yeah. UMMA or UMA. Yeah, I've heard like of that. that. I've heard of that one. I heard yeah, it's got that chick from Sandra Ho or Sandra O oh from uh Grey's Anatomy. Ooh. It's got her in it. And it that was actually a really good movie, in my opinion. Um and, and yeah, I just those two were really, really good. I and I really liked uh, All of Us Are Dead, the TV show All of Us Are Dead. Huh. That was that um Korean uh zombie TV show that was on Netflix. Oh, I don't get Netflix anymore. I'll have to check I, I have to I really that. I enjoyed that one a lot. I really liked that one. It kept me kept me watching. I binged it. It was good. That is good. But you know, and the funny thing is, I never even really got into zombies until I met like <laughs> Jeff and them, or Jack and Jeff and um Dan and all them. I really, you know, I, I started writing the book because of them. But um I'm I'm big paranormal thriller kind of a gal. I, I'm not I, that's what I want to write in and that's the one book that I'm afraid to write. Really? That's yeah. the one you want to turn me after a while is like the paranormal like uh, mystery type. Wow. Yeah. I didn't I, I see that and I want to be well rounded. Like with me, like I'll explore an abandoned house, a graveyard, a movie filming site in a fucking haunted house in a in a place where they shot a Gettysburg, whatever. It's all life's a big fucking garden. Life's yeah. Just a big, why not eat all the fruits and veggies instead of just I don't just like carrots. Fuck that. I'm over there eating radishes too, yo. I'm eating blueberries. I really, I really do want to go out on. You know, I mean, being out here in Arizona, and not knowing anybody, it's really hard for me to find um people that go out and do stuff like the paranormal investigating and stuff like that because I would love to go out and get back into it because I used to do that a lot in yeah. Ohio. But um, being out here now, it's been kind of hard, you know, to hook up with a group. They all have their own people and they're kind of really closed off. If I had, you know, if I was able to go out, I might just start going out and exploring stuff myself, um, you know, but I think it would help me write the paranormal book and I wouldn't be so scared of it. But I think I, I think I'm, I'm pretty... I guess it's one of those things where it's like there's so many different avenues you could take out there because nobody really knows because they're dead. The people, the spirits, they, <laughs> the spirits are dead, you know, and they're not giving you any clear answers on, you know, wh whether the chill spot, the cold spot in your room, whether that is, um, whether that's a ghost or the, if it's hot, that means this, you know, everybody goes automatically straight to oh my god it's demonic oh my god it's a portal. oh that gets fucking old. and it really That's irritates me because those old. are very few and far between thank and it's you just, jen yeah they're very few and far between and and thank you honestly for i mean if you think about it in the grand scheme of things i think the demons have better things to do than to sit here and deal with us you think they're worried about little johnny briscoe uh, yeah or exactly guy? i mean or you some, guys watch too much tv i'm, I'm right. sorry like even in Lorraine did thousands of cases and they say they probably dealt with the demons maybe 20 times out of the thousands they've dealt with it. Exactly. I mean, I don't, I don't think, you know, that it's, it, it, it's as widespread. I think, I think a lot there's of malicious times. Spirits. If you were an yeah, asshole, I'm not you're saying alone, there's not. I'm not saying there's not malicious spirits. Definitely there are. Um, there's some people that are just downright nasty just because they just have a very terrible, terrible spirit about them. And they were pricks. Yeah. Yes, it is what it is. Let's call it. Half these people, spade. Not, not to reference my man crush King, but if you look at like sometimes they come back and even like riding the bullet, these people that are assholes come back as assholes. They're not all fucking demons. They were just dickheads and they were these greasers were punks when they were alive. So they're punks when they're dead. I mean, I just have a. The same I have a hard time believing an investigator who sits there and goes, oh, my God, it's a demon. Oh, my God, there's a portal over there. Because I'm sorry, I don't really think you know what you're talking about now. And because not, I mean, you you haven't even gone through the checklist of 
why it's not just a train. You haven't gone through the track checklist of what is it not going on, you know. No. And I'm sorry, dude, if that was a demon, 99% of these fucking fly-by-nighters, Zach Baggins, cologne-wearing fucking yeah. Baggins, they'd be out of there shitting their pants with their fucking penises between well, their Well, I legs. mean... You're you not know, train at, ordering ministers. You're not going to fuck with a demon that'll twist your head behind your back. If it's a demon, Baggins, you're Baggins sent in his little bitch boys all the time. So, I mean, he really didn't face jack shit. He was just, just a face, the pretty boy of the group. Sure. And Aaron would come back shitting sure. his pants off. Aaron, that poor guy. I, I don't know. I see why he lost a ton of weight. I probably would have lost a ton a of weight. Yeah, and he, he, he got the this, this shit scared out of him, literally. <laughs> if they're going to get shot by someone, he's going to get the bullet because he's going first. Exactly. But you yeah, I, I just think he's a fraud. To not, not to bring that up and keep going on that, because I want to talk a bit more about you, but we got about five, ten minutes left. I want to show where people can find your stuff. But you're right in the middle of everything. You're right in the middle of the Manson family, the Roswell UFO sightings, mm -hmm. the Wild Wild West, um, where all the gangsters were, Jesse James, Tombstone. Mm -hmm. You're right where the Thunderbirds are seen. I mean, you're where a lot of activity. Skinwalkers. Skinwalk Ranch. Yeah. The yes. Texas Thunderbirds. Um, I mean, just uh, last month, they saw in Vegas, which is about six hours away from me, they just saw something fall out of the sky. Crashed in someone's backyard. They have a 911 call that they just played today um, on the news out there. Nobody else has heard this except for, I think, maybe one or two other people. Um, other than, you know, it's on YouTube. You can find it. It's in Vegas. Um, something crashed in somebody's backyard. The guy calls, the kid calls 911. Says that there's people out here between seven feet tall and ten feet tall. There's two of them. They have shiny Holy eyes, shit. and they're sitting outside of this thing that just fell out of the sky into my backyard. And the cops even have a a um a video cam, a body cam of the thing falling out of the sky because there was another officer in the area. So I'm just saying, <laughs> we you know. It's it's happening. They're 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 here. I mean, they've been here for a minute, but yeah, we they it's just to we had that, that. The White House. Yeah, yeah. They 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 finally started admitting, and of course, I thought at first it was just them trying to kind of um, deflect us because it came out around 2021. So I thought they were kind of trying to deflect us from when they were mandating the um, vaccines and stuff. But yeah. I, you know, it's more and more is happening now. And it's, I just think, I really think that somebody's going to catch something on TV, on the camera. Yeah. I think it's getting more and more in public. I think people are starting to realize they're not afraid. The whole men in black thing is very weird. It's funny yeah. to say about the vaccine, not to get political and back into it, but we never got rid of Corona, but where the fuck's the vaccine now? No one cares about masks now. It's yeah, just funny that now about it's that. The, no, yeah, the, but the, the asshole's already president now. They don't give a fuck. I'm not going to drop that. <laughs> But um, we we definitely where I'm at in Arizona is definitely kind of in the middle of a little bit of everything. We have kind we of have uh, yeah yeah they they have there's actually not too far from me part of the desert where it was called the I think it's the Dutchman. Um, it was some pirate who supposedly had a shit ton of gold and stuff that buried his treasure out in the desert, and everybody has tried to find it. Oh, I love shit like that. Treasure hunts and people just a lot of people know, have died uh, trying to find it. And yeah, yes. So now it's supposedly haunted and covered, protected by ghosts of pirates and people. And oh, I'm sure Lord. it's I'm sure it's got something there. But See, yeah, it's rem, yeah. Yeah, where you where you live is like a try. It's almost like me. We got the witch lore, the pirate lore. We get all that stuff from the ocean. The oh, witches, and then I know, live a couple world. hours from Sedona, which has all those vortexes up there that I've never been to yet. So the vortex. The Savona, yes, the Savona Vortexes. I've heard of that on Unsolved yes. Mysteries and other things. Uh huh. So you get enough material to write books and the cows come home, whether fiction or non, for Christ's sake. Yes, this is true. <laughs> and there, Dan, so, Dungeon Dan Ubell found the last Dutchman's mine. That's it. Oh, the last Dutchman's mine. That's very cool. I know there's a flying Dutchman pirate ship that's off the coast of Maine. Could be related. Um, well, we got about 10 minutes. Stream yards. Give me about 10 more minutes to go. Um, let's, let's talk serious now. Where can people find your stuff? I know Facebook, but let's plug that too. But Amazon, YouTube, whatever. Go ahead and plug away, girl. We're going to yeah, get you. 
you can find me on um, Facebook at Jenna Motto Author. Um, you can also find me on Amazon. My books are on Amazon. Just look up uh, Jen Amato. That's two N's. And um, that will not be changing until I decide to genre, genre jump. So um, all my zombie fiction will be in Jen Amato. And then when Smart. I jump genres, it'll be JL Folk. So, um, yeah. And then, um, you know, you can, I have, oh my God, I have, Morganholistics.com um, is my, for my Morgan, my holistic business. Um, you can, you know, if, you, if you're in Arizona and you need a pool clean in Tucson, give me a call. <laughs> We've got, there's all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Just uh, you got a piranha you know, right on the cover. Piranha. That's so cool. It's piranha. Yeah. Piranha yeah. pool services. Yeah. Piranha pool Just service. Like and then yeah. you can, you can also find me um, Mystic T. George, if you want to, if you guys want an autograph book, what you can do is, um, I'll, I'll have to find my PayPal <laughs> so I can figure I out do how that to... when I get my book, I want to autograph and I'll give you some money for it. George, thank you again for this beautiful. Yes. Case, by the way. I will definitely, yes. I'll get all that information out and I will post it up. If you want to get an autograph book, I can mail it to you. No problem. Okay, good. And all the other stuff's on Facebook. Are you on YouTube? Yeah. Where... I'm not, uh, other no than uh, the Book Asylum. But I am you, not on do you, um, Before we go to, do you, do you do you plan on doing? Are you open to doing conventions? Maybe like I know around Halloween yes. time people do meet and greets, Warren Con. Are you open to that if someone reaches out to you and maybe? Yes. Yeah. I am open to doing author conventions. I'm open to doing book signings. I am open to doing. Yep. Um, I would really love to do some of these hippie conventions where that they have that are going around where you can you know, peddle your holistic products and stuff like that. You know, I just definitely need to make sure that I have the time available. That's all. That's all. Obviously a little bit of notice <laughs> is good. I know Rachel, Rachel King's into that big time and she goes around selling her candles, but there's always, there's ghost hunters, there's authors, there's publicists, whatever the fuck. Yeah. I so, love Paracons. Yeah. I love Paracons. Yeah. Those, they're coming up this fall and I'm sure people watching or whatever like that can get a hold of you. I've been sharing on Facebook. So, um, yeah, hit me up. Before we take off, Jen, is there anything I left out? Anything you want, you want to ask me anything? Is there anything you want to, when is your book going to come out? Ah, uh, everybody. I, hopefully by Halloween. Dude, I got to <laughs> tell you, I don't know how the fuck you guys do it. Between just life and then you sit down and go, I'm going to do it. You sit down and you wait and you hear a noise and just, it's just, you need a soundproof room in the middle <laughs> of a dungeon somewhere because you just can't. How do you concentrate? Before we go, I got to ask you, how the fuck do you, do you get some wine out? Do you get some incense? Do you lock up the windows? What do you do? I pretty much have adult ADHD and do eight different things at once while I'm writing. No I'm sitting right. there taking care of a dog. I'm also taking care of my husband. I'm also taking care of probably <laughs> some text messages that I'm getting. You know, it, it's just, I do 12 different things at a time. And you sit down and write in between all that. Yes. No fucking way. <laughs> yes. That's impressive. And I can, I can pump out about a thousand words. Really? Which is, yeah. Which is, I mean, to me, it's a, it's enough. And then to some other people who can pump out. So I, I have friends that can sit there and pump out 3,000 words a day. And I'm just like, I don't know. Be I don't know how you do um, that. Yeah. George wants you, us both to go to the Warrens Paracon. I'd be honored. I went to the very first one in Connecticut. If that I got would be awesome. the table and win, I, I reached out and asked them for a table last year. They never got back to me. And that would be awesome. Them, but I told them I'm interested. So I don't know. But you guys heard it here. Jen's definitely ready to go. She's married. Her husband and her will do whatever. I mean, obviously, if it's farther away, she'd like to be confiscated for some traveling, but that's between you guys. But hit <laughs> her up. She's got some good shit. Check out her stuff. Order some stuff. I'm sure she'd be great. to. Uh, she'd love to sign a book for you. Um, yeah, so thank absolutely. you so much. That was thank a great you. hour. Um, I'm blessed to know you. I'm blessed that you got married. Congratulations again. Thank Lucky you. Man. I appreciate awesome. the time to come out on your show. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll get you again. Um, we'll get you again. You're You're a good chick. He's a lucky dude. You're a good chick. I'm sure you're both Thank good you. people. You seem like you have a lot of fun. You're very supportive. I know Heather loves you. So maybe sometime we'll come on. I'll have Heather as a co-host and us three can yes. chat. Yes. I'll try to plan it. Maybe even bring the old man on if he's, if he's around not doing something. Us four will chat. Okay. <laughs> definitely. All right. Yeah. And, oh, okay. No, even the witch. We'll bring on the witch. How's that? We, I can yeah. bring the four people. Definitely Sabelle. For sure. Sabelle. My that's, sister. That's from, say, yep. Huh? Sabelle. Awesome. So. Jenna Motto author. Check her out, guys. She does holistic healing, makes her own remedies. Um, she's just got great, great positive words to say. She don't take no shit either. She'll clean your pool. She'll make a t-shirt, Mystic Tea Designs, T-E-E, -E, Mystic Tea. 
And um, yeah, Piranha Pool Cleaning. She's an author. She's all over the place, man. I don't know how she breathes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she breathes, but she's- a, I definitely, she, my head hits a pillow. I'm out for the night. <laughs> I would say you probably sleep a good fucking seven hours if you're lucky. Um, so yeah, um, thank you guys for watching Historically Haunted Vodcast. You guys really make the show it's possible. Thanks to our healer, uh, our healer, our, our sponsor, Readings by Anna G, who's a holistic healer as well as Jennifer. So uh, thank you guys so much. Check her out. Don't miss the fucking train. Thank you guys in chat.